Governor Jay Inslee wants to release inmates from the Monroe Correctional Complex. What will the plan look like? Plus, with businesses coming to a near stop here in Spokane, how will the city survive without its biggest revenue, sales tax, especially in a time like right now? It's been near 200 days since Spokane's last 70 degree day, and that's what we're aiming for tomorrow. But will that hold through the Easter weekend? Uh, given the fact that the sun is out, it, it would be really human for us to take our foot off the, the pedal here. But that is just too dangerous. And I just want to reiterate that message. To me, it's the single most important thing we need to think about in the state of Washington uh, right now. Governor Inslee there saying, even though the sun is out, to stay indoors. Thanks for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Regina On. Let's get straight to Mark Canerhan tonight as we continue to practice social distancing here at CREM. Hey there, Mark. Good evening. Hey, good evening to you, Regina. We are almost to Friday. We're like this close to Friday, which means we've almost to the weekend, and that certainly is good news, right? Okay, we do have some news to get to tonight, let's, so let's get straight to it. Starting with Washington prisons, considering the early release of some inmates to curb the spread of the coronavirus. This comes after a major disturbance involving inmates at the Monroe Correctional Complex last night over the result of six positive coronavirus cases among inmates. Today, Secretary of the Department of Corrections, Steve Sinclair, said they're looking into the early release for some nonviolent inmates who are approaching their release dates. The goal would be to reduce the population in order to enable social distancing practices among inmates and staff. Governor Inslee and Sinclair also say they're working to help the transition into isolation for inmates be as smooth and low risk as possible. Um, they are considering trying to get them into existing cells, but to do that, people have to move out without violence. We don't want violence. We don't want to expose our staff to that. Well, Governor Inslee said more details are to come on that plan in the coming days. Well, amid the coronavirus pandemic, business across the nation and in Spokane has slowed significantly, and that means less sales tax revenue at a time where the city needs to be spending more money to deal with the virus. So how is that impacting Spokane's budget? Krem 2 political reporter Casey Decker looked into it. Spokane City Council just received a briefing from the city's finance department. That presentation based on modeling from a couple weeks ago. It's important to know this data is all very preliminary and like projections for the spread of COVID itself will change rapidly. But here's what that first round of projections said. It estimates the total sales tax revenue the city will take in this year could fall from roughly 53 million to more like 42 million. And together with some other possible losses, this model says general funds could drop by about 6%. Sales tax makes up about a quarter of the general fund's revenue. The bulk of that goes to paying salaries and benefits for city employees. So what does its loss mean for Spokane? Right now, nothing too dire. Here's why. First, the city's already instituted a few cost-saving measures like hiring freezes. Secondly, Spokane has built up a pretty sizable reserve fund meant for situations just like this one. And third, city leaders expect we'll be getting quite a bit of money from state and federal stimulus efforts. So how all this shakes out is still to be determined. There's going to be a reduction in sales tax uh, over this year. We'd have no idea how much. And at the same time, we're going to get a bunch of money from the federal and state government. How that balances out at the end, I don't, I, I really don't know. But right now, layoffs or serious program cuts, not on the table. The real issue would come if the economy is still in shambles come next year. Then this becomes a longer term problem. But for now, Spokane is focused on cutting costs where they can, while also increasing the amount of resources it's offering its citizens in need right now. So we're doing both at the same time. We're both spending money and trying to save money uh, strategically. Casey Decker, Krem 2 News. Over at the White House tonight, members of the U.S. Senate say a deal is unlikely to be reached by the end of the week on additional funding for the Paycheck Protections Program. That's that lifeline for small businesses trying to navigate the coronavirus pandemic. As lawmakers continue negotiations, the Federal Reserve announced it would provide up to $2.3 trillion in loans for businesses and state and local governments. 
All right, let's get right to some of the top stories that you need to know tonight. The White House saying no surprise bills for coronavirus patients. Hospitals taking money from the $2 trillion stimulus package will have to agree not to send surprise medical bills to patients being treated for the coronavirus. This will allow to protect patients covered by government programs, employer plans or self-purchased insurance. And another 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits last week, and that follows a record 6.9 million who filed the previous week. That brings the total number of jobs lost in three weeks to 16.8 million. Prior to the coronavirus outbreak, about 200,000 claims were processed each week. Meanwhile, nurses in Washington and across the nation are protesting the shortage of masks and other personal protective equipment. At St. Joseph's Hospital in Tacoma, a small group of healthcare workers workers gathered outside the hospital on their breaks to protest. Washington Governor Jay Inslee has ordered for ventilators to be shipped elsewhere and is closing the temporary state field hospital. So what message does that send to the public during our continued pandemic and stay home order? Chris Daniels from our Seattle sister station had an exclusive one on one conversation with the governor and asked him those very questions. Governor Jay Inslee, thanks for joining us. You bet. I want to get right to it. There's been some news in the last couple of days about the state giving back ventilators, the state turning back over CenturyLink Field Events Center. Are people going to hear that news over the last couple of days and think the worst is over? Well, I certainly hope not because that could be uh, deadly for a lot of people. And I do think you raise a really important point because uh, as the sun comes out and we've been able to give some of this equipment back to the uh, federal government for other places that have been hit so much harder than us that are having their hospital systems overwhelmed, there could be a human a tendency to let up on the, on the pedal here, but we cannot do that. It would be fatal for people. Uh, what we have heard from the physicians is that uh, even as we come over the top of the curve, and hopefully our numbers of fatalities per day will start to go down, but you could have an equal number of people lose their lives as those numbers are going down, as lost their lives as the numbers were going up. So this period of time, what you might think of as the second half of this effort, is just as important, if not more so, of people to be dedicated to social distancing. So what I would say is our ability to stay home, to, uh, to not socialize, to not go to the store maybe than, more than absolutely necessary is just as maybe more important than it was the last two weeks. And our ability to get out of this, our ability to restart our schools and our businesses uh, will be hastened the more that we follow this social distancing. All of us are eager to get back and open our restaurants and our businesses and our kids going to school. And we will get back to that day, the more of us who really are dedicated to the social distancing mission. Now, good news, the vast majority of Washingtonians are hearkening to this. They're, they're abiding by this order. They're helping each other. They're helping their neighbors so that if you've got an older neighbor, you can do their grocery shopping so they don't have to go out. Those kind of things abound throughout the state. So that's good news. But yes, we have got to be as dedicated as possible for the next several weeks, just like we were the last two. And here in Spokane, social distancing in the county could go until the end of May. That's according to Dr. Bob Lutz, who says that he's seeing the majority of cases coming from Spokane Valley and the city of Spokane. But many are wondering when will these restrictions actually begin to lighten up? A gradual lightening up of the restrictions. As has been discussed earlier, there may be some targeted industries that are loosened up first. But again, I think it's essential that the stay home, stay healthy message is one that we will be looking at for many weeks, if not maybe the next few months to come. Governor Inslee's stay home, stay healthy order was recently extended through May 4th. And here's what you need to know about the local numbers of coronavirus cases. The Spokane County Health Officer is reporting a total of 246 confirmed cases in Spokane County. 14 people have died and 42 are being hospitalized. Statewide, the Washington Department of Health confirms there are more than 9,600 cases in Washington. 446 people have died in the hardest hit area. King County has confirmed nearly 3,900 cases. And across the state line, the Idaho Health and 
and Welfare Department confirming there are 19 deaths and over 1,200 cases of coronavirus in Idaho. In North Idaho, Kootenai County reporting 42 cases, while Bonner County has confirmed three cases. And over on the west side of the state, pet adoption soaring as people seek out their quarantine companion. Officials with the Humane Society of Tacoma and Pierce County say that pet adoptions have really spiked throughout March. Most of the adoptions have been cats or kittens. The demand is likely driven by people who are wanting to stay home or staying home and now have more time to get to know a new pet. Let's take a look at first weather now. We finally experienced some nice sunny warm weather today. So Thomas, it was really nice out there. It really feels like it can't get much better than this, but it could. <laughs> just a little bit <laughs> just a little bit more i i know and here's the thing we were that shy of 70 degrees today That's right true. okay well how about tomorrow i think we can do it tomorrow we've yeah. been forecasting right <laughs> at 70 degrees all week long for friday well i'm gonna stick with that forecast just for one more day but yeah just ended up at 69 today plenty 70s in central washington as we continue to wrap the ramp things up this week by the way our most recent 70 degree day in spokane 198 days ago, so, you know, not too long ago. Uh, September 24th was that day. We've had all of our winter snow in between now and well, last our last 70 degree day. Uh, here's that high pressure area still going to give us one more day of warm weather, but our next weather system doesn't even come in from the west. It comes in from the north, and that's going to be a pretty cold weather system that pushes into the inland northwest over the course of the Easter weekend. So I'll tell you exactly how cold Easter Sunday is going to be and how strong the winds are going to be for this upcoming weekend. Those details in just a few minutes. But for now, let's send things over to Mark. All right, Thomas, thank you very much. Still ahead tonight, the pandemic also hitting farmers hard. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you how they're trying to adapt so their crops don't go to waste.